Thunder, 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 Thunder Geeks are live! Hello, Thundarians! You're listening to 102.7 FM CILU or around the world at luradio.ca. That was the future soon by I Fight Dragons. And I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. And I'm Megan. And we're your Thunder Geeks. Guys, thank you so much for joining us once again. If this is your first show every week, we like to sit down, talk about what we've been up to this week. Actually, this week it's been two weeks because we got last week off. We got to do the ThunderCon on show live. And, oh, man, it, it's felt like forever since I've actually got to sit down in the studio. One week off, and I'm just itching to get back down. Ironically enough, we were still in the studio last week. Yeah, yeah. we Eating, did your, t- eating Indian food. We did. We decided to eat Indian food <laughs> instead. We just had a party in the station there. Uh, so many regrets. <laughs> I ate Hashtag so much. Hashtag no regrets. I ate so much Indian food. Just Megan was just moaning for hours. Just, <laughs> uh, stop. <laughs> Making her own little sympathy. Sim- <laughs> symphony. Sy- sympathy symphony. Because like you're like, ah, aw. Oh, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. How have you guys been? It's been, it's been, yeah, it's been two weeks since we've been on the it's air and been... stuff. Well, I mean, Halloween passed. We got to take Halloween off. We got to have fun with I that. I got to take you to a place filled with clowns. Yeah, Rob is absolutely Wait. terrible. <laughs> yeah. What happened? I missed something. Rob has an amazing uncle. Rob, tell him a little bit about your uncle. (gasps) So my uncle Ed uh, is the Halloween guy on Pine Street that many of you may know. And this year he decided to go a little over the top with the clowns. Now, if you haven't, his display gets bigger and bigger. Every single year gets more elaborate. He invaded the neighbor's yard. Yes, he's invaded his neighbor's <laughs> yard. He, this has become such a local phenomenon. He now takes over the house next to him to just expand his Halloween display. It is a spectacle to behold. I am 100%. I'm pretty sure this is one of the best like haunted house displays in Thunder Bay. I have not seen a better one yet. Uh, he's definitely the best. Not only that, but he has friends or himself sometimes dress up like Leatherface, have an actual chainsaw, and chase kids down the street. Yes, it's terrifyingly hilarious. My friend uh, back home, he actually ch- he actually changed his garage. His in- garage? His- garage? Garage? His garage. Garage? He changed his garage into like <laughs> a slaughterhouse. And he like sat in there with his I friend. mean, for Halloween, right? Not just for his like, hey, I'm going to be a <laughs> mass murderer today. Yeah. Uh- Look out, girls. <laughs> I want to gouge out your eyes. He just sort of changed the entire thing into like this really cool display. And I was like, oh, I was like, one day, one day I will do this. Because I really just, I like scaring kids. Notice how she dodged the question about it being for Halloween or not. <laughs> you know, <I'm- laughs> hey, man, we ride together, we die together, yo. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't no snitch. <laughs> well, like I said, uh, when my uncle retires, I inherit his stuff. Ooh. If he remembers that he promised me, Ed. You promised I get the hearse. <laughs> yeah, because I want Rob to have a hearse. I just want to... Actually, no, I do want you to have a hearse because I want we get. I want to get like a cheap coffin and I just want to use that for my seatbelt. We need to make that like street legal so I can just ride in the back in a coffin. We can have a rollout and I'll pop up. No, that's not people. what it's going to be. I've already decided this when I was a kid. Okay. I'm going to modify the back so it's a bed. So I could just like go on road trips and just take naps in it. Fair. Dirt naps. Dirt naps. What, you don't want to turn it into the 2016 Ghostbuster mobile? Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I want to be able to take naps. So, like, can you imagine, like, us taking a road trip to, like, let's say Winnipeg or Toronto? And it's a long way. I don't want to pay for a hotel. Andrew, we're just going to park somewhere. We're going to snuggle in the back of your yeah. car. We, we need to, like, look up that old episode of Pimp My Ride where they actually pimped out a hearse. Yeah, uh, they turned it the back uh, coffin into a barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> So they, Rob, they, they have... just hold me closer in the backseat of your hearse. <laughs> I just want to snuggle. Come on, you could do worse. <laughs> I'm actually really impressed with that. Good job. Wow, that practice outside really paid off. Yes, yes, that's... Oh. Um, I'm terrible at making up lyrics. With Canada God. has... talent <laughs> It's the singing demon from Buffy. He's possessed you. <gasps> Sweet! I know, Rob, you're super excited about that. The uh, 15th anniversary of Once More with Feeling. Such excitement. It's one of my favorite episodes of Buffy. Uh, most Buffy fans know it. Uh, me and Kyle, we'll put on the soundtrack and just sing along. Yeah, I enjoyed the music from it. I need to watch the series. Because, uh, I mean, you pointed out Xander's girlfriend. I'm like, who's that? I don't <laughs> care about her. Oh, yeah, there was that 
other Dawn, and I remembered vaguely what she was. I think at the, I think the end of that season's where I stopped watching. It's fair. Um, in defense, season five's season finale is actually a good bookend for the show because they thought they were getting canceled. So that's how just they wrote it. So it's probably why I stopped watching. Yeah. Oh, fair. But then season six comes along, and it's one of my favorite seasons because first off, you got the weirdest. Uh, big bad of the show ever where it's not a demon or a monster it's the trio where just three nerds are like hey want to take over the city oh no i actually hated them that's i watched the first couple episodes of that season and went nah here's the thing the trio start off weak but this season has one of the biggest season finales ever to the point where i don't want to spoil it for anyone okay fair but once more feeling is the musical episode and if anyone out there has ever seen uh dr horrible sing-along blog you know Joss Whedon can do musicals. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing... Is this the first musical you think he's done, or do you know of any he's done before that? To my knowledge, his career pretty much started with Buffy. So he cut his teeth with his musicals doing the episode. Yes. It was actually really nice because it had, like, very... It was, like, a mix of, like, very old... Like, very... It was very influenced by musicals that are already out there. And it was very influenced by the music of the time. Yeah, right? you, you so pointed like, out uh, Spike's rock song there. Sounded very much to like the band that that used to be called Bush X. It sounded very like that. Are they like Sonic X? Where they're just oh, like- <laughs> faster, 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 faster. I actually really <laughs> liked that show. Okay. Wrong. It's just wrong. It no, good. the only the only correct answer is Sonic Saturday. But that's wrong. What about Sonic Boom? Oh. No, that song's fun. Okay, no, it's the new one. Actually, yes. Yes, 100% Sonic Boom. I will defend this dumb show to the end of time because the comedy writing's <laughs> genius. No one was paying attention, and then they got a second season. I, I actually really liked the one little split they did to the, the demon. Yeah. The former demon, where she's, like, really super rocking out hardcore about bunnies. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Anya, I like bunnies. Yeah, uh, <laughs> one of the jokes is Anya the demon uh, has turned human and nothing scares her that's like paranormal and all that because she was a demon fair but bunnies scare the ever-loving bejeebus out of her to the point where when someone was wearing bunny slippers she refused to be in the same area with them because she thought they would kill her that's adorable that's, that's kind of like you with clowns yeah yeah no i mean see how i took that full circle from halloween house to buffy back to the halloween house he was very mean at the halloween house because there was a lot of clowns <laughs> and kyle didn't want to protect me <laughs> even um, though you were just like almost in his back just nyo, 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 nyo. I, I i just i did not want to converse with that individual i felt that uh that we didn't have a really meaningful dialogue to have without me screaming and peeing everywhere because, <laughs> I mean, not only was it the type of clown I do not like, you know, white face, red nose, like, Zebo. Zebo just still terrifies my dreams, and he had the extra of looking menacingly psychotic and laughing, and Ooh, it's just... I love it. No, 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 I, I did not like it. I love the imagery. I love the scenery. I love that he scared kids, though. That was so cool to see his you know, kids running and screaming in terror from Leatherface. That's such a fun experience. Um, but yeah, he's, he does this every year. Next year, it's on Pine Street. It's right by Metro. You can't miss it. Look for the mass of people in cars. You probably have to park in Metro. <laughs> probably have to park in metro but oh wow it was beautiful i'm upsetty because i didn't get to do anything spooky with you guys this year like at all Aww. that's okay we mm. can still scare andrew halloween stuff's on sale right now and i know where to get some cheap clown stuff no Ooh. we don't we we don't need to do that who says i already um, didn't so like now i have to wait until next year to do spooky stuff with you guys next year we are going to haunted fort I'm going to drag all of you by your ankles. I don't care. Fair, fair. I, I just I didn't want to spend thirty dollars for haunted carnival and just be terrified out of my mind. I would just cry the entire time. I would just cry, going, "Please, take you got me lucky home. this year. You got lucky." I did. And you here's the thing: he'd be crying and I'd be laughing. You don't have to face your Silent Hill this year. Thank you. <laughs> I just realized we're comedy and tragedy when it comes to clown. That's kind of true. I I weep and he laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> So Rob, you we've been playing. Okay, we like to play games here on Thunder Geeks. And Rob has one. My favorite one. game is Mess with Andrew. His favorite game is, of course, Mess with Andrew. And <laughs> mm, I got the high score. You do have the high <laughs> score right now, and you're terrible, and I hate you for it. However, you had a question for us this week, and then we had a bit of a game to play. So, 
Rob, what was your debate? So my question was, I, I'm going to give you one of two superpowers with a twist. One is you get super strength, but you have to take cocaine to achieve it. So snow flame. Snow flame. If you're snow flame. Yep. The second is you can be invisible, but only when no one's looking at you. Okay. So the invisibility one is like kind of sucky because if anyone looks in your line of sight, like in your line, in, like if anyone looks in your direction, you appear... Oh no, I got caught, right? So that sucks. Okay, I, I have a question. Um, does it work like the character in Mystery Men where if it's like a camera? So I mean, does it have to be a person? Physically, eyeballs is what makes them appear, but if it's like a camera or a sensor, I'm still invisible. It has to be a person, but I'll even throw in this twist. If it, the person's blind, you're still invisible. Nice. Hmm. What, okay, so do you want to be Snowflame or Invisible Boy, Megan? You know what? I bet if I, I bet if I uh, partook in some of the, uh, I bet if I ride, I bet if I ride that white pony, I'm pretty sure I could have super strength anyway. But I'm talking like superhero level strength, where you can like throw a car with one hand, like you know Spider-Man what? level strength. You're just gonna go rah. I will, I will, I will be a cocaine raging. Dr. Roxo! <laughs> okay. That, that should be your supervillain. Would you be a supervillain or a superhero? I'm assuming supervillain because a- you're doing a lot of cocaine. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. I would probably, probably start off thinking I was a superhero, and then I would, like, slowly digress. And, and so, I got, no, like, you just so- power trip it. <laughs> I'll just power trip it. <laughs> no, you just so up and just see the pile of dead bodies. It's like, oh. What have oh. I done? The thing is, no, is like... No, I, I, I liked Megan's, where she's like, it's going to be a slow decline where she doesn't realize it, and then we're going to have to have a superhero interview where she finally snaps and goes full, you know, full Doctor Roxo. Because there is, I mean, there actually no, there are some good doctors within you know supervillain superheroes. But I just, I think most doctors that use Doctor in their name are evil. Doctor Roxo, the rock and roll clown. You can well, see my junk through my jumpsuit. Let's see, we got Doctor Octopus, Doctor Doom, Doctor Wily. Yeah, you see, like most, of, and the only ones I can think of that are good would be Doctor Strange and Doctor Fate. Oh, there's even, like, Dr. Harley and Quinzel kind of becomes a villain as well. But, I mean, within their actual name... Mm, okay. No. Most times, when they when they insist on being called Doctor... <laughs> yeah, like, Tony's actually got a doctor, th- so he could be calling himself... Doctor Iron Man! Yeah, he See, could be Doctor Iron Man. Doctor B! Doctor B! See, when you add Doctor into it, it pretty much <laughs> makes them evil. Yeah, I would, uh, I have this like, thing where, like, I get really, really, really hyper and I scream into Tim Horton's cups. You guys have seen yep. me do yes. this. Okay. So imagine that on cocaine. on cocaine with super strength, like. So regular Megan. <laughs> Here comes regular Megan. <laughs> Plot twist. Megan on cocaine is just, like, chill. <laughs> I don't even see, know for, if that's possible. See, for me, uh, I'm down with the invisibility. However, I'm not trying for superhero. I'm going to crime right away. If my power is invisibility, it's like, yep, yeah, that's why I want to know. So I need to find, you know, places that I can rob that aren't being watched by a camera that's actively mo- monitored. And yeah, I'm crime spree. I'm just, I'm going to rob. You're going to rob. But it'd, be, going to it, rob. it'd hey. be hard to hide from the police because you can never go invisible when it's useful. But th- that's the best thing I could think of because with invisibility, but no one, but you know, n- people can see you when they're looking at you, doesn't really lend itself to the superhero genre because every time you try to infiltrate a villain, except in the one scenario within Mystery Man, doesn't really work. Invisibility, I would probably resort to crime as well. Let's be honest here. Well, on this topic, let's pick some superpowers and see if you'd go good or Megan. <laughs> and also, I'm curious, like, how how would you use them here? So we're using the random superpower wiki. Um, I got parallel existence. That just so sounds the power like... to exist in every parallel universe and be aware of it. So so like Rick. Whoa. whoa. Kind of. Yeah, you would be Rick. <laughs> okay, so I can like chaotic neutral. I'd <laughs> I'd say I'd go not villain, but what's the word I'm looking for? Like. I'd be a profiteer where I would like take tech from a s- advanced one, patent it here, and get rich. Hmm. Fair. Um. Well, some of the examples they used was uh, you know Superboy Prime, uh, the lick from Ad- the Lich from Adventure Time. I said the lick. They actually do use Rick. Really? Rick is an example of someone who is aware of their alternate selves within alternate Yay. realities. So that makes me question: Is does that give you a sort of future sight? It's, well, here's the thing about infinite time lo- or infinite universes. Infinite. 
You think it? It exists. You don't think it? It still exists. See, I don't know about this. Like, am I aware? Like, do I have like consciousness of all of my existences over the? Over uh, that's the... what it sounds like. That's what you would be aware of. You can all brain of... swap with any of them. So, but for me, I would be using it to see what outfit would be you know best received that day. So I'm like, <laughs> what if I wore this? I mean, that's that's the most. That'd probably be what I use it for the most part because without other powers, I don't know what I know what's gonna. Happen. It's like, okay, what happens if I rob this bank? I'm gonna get caught. Is there any existence where I don't get caught? Yes, but it kind of blows. So, but see, that's why I would do it my way. Is profiteering, man? Hey, this future comp, uh, this alternate timeline has like the cure for cancer. Well, so do I. <laughs> so like HR and Flash, where he's like, I know how to make this cable thingy. Yeah, exactly. Like, he's not a super genius, but he knows things that don't exist here. What's a good another good one? What okay, uh, actually, multiple bodies. Let's talk about multiple bodies. Oh, so you can yeah. make, like... like uh, Osmosis clones? Osmosis clones are like, you know, Dragon Ball Z, where you're making, like, the alternate copies of yourself, or, like, Shadow Clone Jutsu, that, that sort of thing, where you're going to have multiple versions of yourself. Um... I'm going to be as lazy as... Uh, no, I'm, I'm probably just going to look at myself naked a lot. <laughs> See, I think I've, on the drive here, came up with the ultimate scenario for this. Let's say we're doing this radio show. I could have a clone of me rob a place. Th there's video and audio evidence that says I'm here. No matter what proof they come up with there, it's like there's definitive, un unarguable proof that I was in this location the whole time. Hmm. How would you use multiple bodies, Megan? I would just like work like four jobs. Okay, okay. So one of <laughs> <laughs> my original self could, you know, go on a date. Could be spending time with my SO, right? And then three of my others would be like working at like the, the foundry streets. or work, work. whoa, whoa. You can't afford me, bro. No, I didn't say me. me. I don't know. If clone <laughs> you? I'm pretty sure the clone would be like. Well, I mean, is if it's an exact clone of yourself, who do you si decide what who gets to do what? Do you have like a chore wheel for you and your clones? Yeah, I mean, why not? Like, and one of you, like, oh yeah, okay. So Megan number one, you go do the laundry. Megan number two, you go do the dishes. Megan number three, go make the bed. And then OG Megan gets to sit here and play Bioshock. No, no, you know how <laughs> it is. But that, that's the thing is every time they do that within science fiction, where the original, well, even the one, how do you remember that you're the original? There's a Ooh. simple way. Actually, they explain this on Brooklyn Nine Nine. The second the clone comes out. Take a hot iron brand with the number two on it and put it on their face. Oh. Um, so, like, multiple from X-Men Evolution. He can, like... Multiple split man. Split... He can split himself up into whatever, whoever. And as soon as he takes any kind of damage, he just kind of goes back together into one single individual. Right? So I would assume that I am just the OG. And then... But, I mean, in a scenario... Like, when I think of, like, the, the clone technique within Dragon Ball... They kind of split all together, and I sure when one's defeated, you see them paw, you know, puffing and disappearing in a puff of smoke. But is there original and a clone, or is it just four versions of himself, and he has to kind of die three times? Ah, just don't just. And how do you keep your clones from rebelling if you're being late? See, for me, what I would do is I would just make my one job a lot easier. Just four of us would work the same job. And we'd, yeah. all, we'd all have to work, like, one shift a week, and it'd be cool. I like to do laundry anyway, so, like... But so do your clones. Yeah, exactly. Here's so, the thing. Anything you don't like to do, your clones don't like, like to do. Yeah, but when I finally have the motivation to do stuff, I'd be like, okay, clones, let's go. Yeah, okay, let's clean the house. Wah! I think Megan's, like, open enough where she would be, she would, like, let her clones have turns as well. Like, okay, okay, clone number three, you get to decide what we do today. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be so fun. It'd be like, you could just, like, make a couple copies of yourself and be like, okay, what do you want to do today? Like, Wait, Andrew, is there a limit to how many clones I can make? Sixteen. I don't know. <laughs> let's, let's, let's go with four. Anything more than four seems excessive. Well, then, yeah, I, I don't think I'd like that one. Because if there was no actual limit, kind of like multiple man, I'm marching into, like, a... Some... Are you gonna, you're gonna make your own army of robs, aren't you? Yeah. Uh -oh. Or do you realize that they're all gonna be at the, of the average strength and but, speed of rob? But here's the thing: it's quantity over quality. 
Like if I could just like rush a place, wait, wait, wait. there would be so much death. <laughs> what if you took? What if you snorted some cocaine and then split yourself up? Like, <laughs> oh my god! Like what, a million coked out robs. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Could we do? Because hmm, I mean, does the thing inside Rob also get cloned? So could well, we theoretically use Rob as a sort of factory? Like, if we put, like, a shirt on Rob, could we then <gasps> manufacture multiple shirts just by having Rob clone himself? I would have to strip before I declone, though. Yeah, no. Yeah, oh well, I mean, we'd have a lot of naked Robs. And then what would we do with all the or, naked Robs? Or, we could put them in the grinder and sell them as hot dogs. No! no! <laughs> Soylent Green. Hot Robs. Soylent Robs. Hot Robs. Hot Robs. Yes. <laughs> Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> what? Don't you want a little bit of Rob in you? No! <laughs> oh no. Wow. Well, well. Okay, Actually, what's what, the. <laughs> what's the next one? Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm getting a lot of weird ones, so I want to talk about laser eyes because we got that earlier. <laughs> For me, I mean, laser eyes seems like such a useless power because. I, I can't use it to be a hero, and if I use it to rob a place, it's no real difference than a gun. I'm like, I'm gonna shoot something at you. Pew, pew, pew. How powerful are these laser eyes? Can I, like, cut through anything by looking at it? Sure, but, I mean, you can cut through safes, I guess. No, no, my logic is with this one, I'd actually go hero. I'd be, like, in a fire department, you know, like, when they need to do rescue. Jaws. I, who needs the jaws of life? I just have to look at a door's hinges and look around it. Boom. Yeah, if I had laser eyes, I would just, like, use my laser eyes to light my smokes or other people's smokes. Now, could I control the heat and <laughs> pressure of the laser eyes? No, man, you just pew! Yeah, so, so if we say, like, Superman-level, like, you know, laser vision where he can control the intensity and stuff, you can be you something like a brain surgeon where you can just, like, cut out someone's cancer with just by looking at it very carefully. Hmm. But then you get distracted by a loud noise. You're like, what? And then you, you go across the room and... Are we talking... So we're talking about Superman... Suddenly, oy vey. <laughs> so we're talking about, like, Superman precision as opposed to, like, Cyclops. Yeah, I'm going to say Superman precision because, like... Because Cy Cyclops isn't lasers. It's a concussive blast. It's physical force, not a laser. Yes. It's a <laughs> tech... Yeah, I know. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yo, I would probably, like... I would I would just use the my my laser eyes for mundane things like cutting through steaks. <laughs> I don't know. You could toast your to you could buy a loaf of bread at the store that's like uncut and, you and just, just look at it. Laser eyes it and then you have Do you that have that much control? Yeah, just look at a piece of bread, it's toast. <laughs> like I would just use my powers for the dumbest things. <laughs> I would mess with people from a distance, like just a light heat where it'd be like on their shoulder. But I would be like so far away, it's, it's not possible for me to be touching you. And then you just like... <laughs> just yeah, you just away. use it to mess with people. Mess with you especially. I, I would like be outside your apartment one day just peering in. And I could just imagine you jumping around. Where's Rob? Is he outside? But you would be like super super popular at like um, bonfires and stuff. Because you could just... You wouldn't have to worry about like fooling around with kindling or anything. You could just be like pew. Kindling? You throw some gas in there, light a match. Poof, done. <laughs> But laser eyes are so much cooler. <laughs> All right, what's the next one, Andrew? Uh, I got primordial entity physiology. What's that? Um, le okay, let's see. So, so primordial, so it means... The, the power to use the traits of primordial entities. Uh, I, uh, that sounds weird. It just sounds like you're a glop monster. I don't want to be a glop monster. No, no thanks. No I thank mean, you. The only thing that I could think that would be useful for that is you could, like, gloop into, like, a sink that's <laughs> clogged and, like... You could be a plumber. It. You'd you be the be a... best plumber ever. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Why did I even think of that? That's the only thing I could think of is you could just glorp into into a sink, uh, clog sink, and just un unclog it. How about this one? Because Andrew's pa things he's pulling up are weird. Super speed. Super speed? Um, villain. I'm going to go rob stuff right away. You don't even understand. Okay, I'm a waitress. I already have super speed. <laughs> no, nah, see, here, I actually thought about it, and it's the plot of season two of The Flash. I'd speed clone myself and fight myself, but keep all the profit. Like, where I make my villainous side just, just seem to the public as a little <laughs> faster, a little stronger. You're gonna, so you're going to do uh, essentially what Zoom did, yeah. Zoom did. Yeah, so I'd have, like, the villainous me stealing all the money from the different banks, and then there'd be a heroic me going, hey, hey. I got this. I'll stop him. And then every time, just he just got away. 
I'll get him next time. He just got away. The cops would hate you because you were like the worst superhero ever. Yeah, well, what could they do <laughs> against another speedster, huh? Uh, that's that's true. That's true. Um, what I don't else? Think I- I got a adaptive appearance, so essentially you could morph your body to appear as... So, let's just say Mystique? Like Mystique. Um, cosplay! Cosplay. Okay. Yeah, you'd be the best cosplayer ever. Yeah! I or, just... or I would just impersonate Jessica Negri and pick up her checks. So like, that that would be, that would I be thought my you're, thing. I thought you were Actually, I'll, I'll, person, I'll impersonate you pick all up of them. Kyle. That too. And then, <laughs> and then I'm going to change to Gary Busey halfway through. <laughs> Let's go. No, no, Kyle. I want I want you to close your eyes here, and I'm going to go down. And no, no. Uh, and then, and then I, he comes up, and you got Gary Busey's lips. How's it going, Kyle? I don't, I think or I Or Carol just... Channing. I'm like, hi, I'm Carol Channing. Is, I would just traumatize Kyle. And he what would, I would become impotent. I would keep turning into different girls to then catfish <laughs> Kyle. And then... <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you know... You know, like, I just had the worst, the worst thing. I could just, like, morph into, like, looking like one of my husbandos and stare in the mirror naked and do bad things to myself. And here's the thing, Megan. (laughs) Because most of your husbandos aren't seen without pants, you can make it however you want. (laughs) Well, I mean, with adaptive appearance, I mean, you can just mix and match body parts like Axe from Animorphs. So I'll just make the most attractive person ever. I'll just just start taking, like, different points of people and go, No, see, here's the thing. I just realized you'd be, like, the ultimate, like, online dating guy. Because it's like, hey, what do you look for in a man? Boom. He needs to have Venom Snake's face, um, Captain America's chest. What about his biceps? And, oh, come on. Those um, bi- oh. biceps? Oh. <laughs> and, um, oh, why am I free? Sam Jackson's bulge. <laughs> that makes you uncomfortable? <laughs> That's going back like two years there. Who's booty? Uh, who's got a great booty? Me? Oh, <laughs> Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson's Peter booty. Parker. Dick Grayson's Peter booty. Parker. Those are no, those are like two fit booties. Like I like I like bubble butts. No, no, Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson's got a bubble 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 butt. Bubble no, no, butt. no, no. I know exactly who. What's her name? What's her name? Ah. Voiced Sugalite? Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Oh. <laughs> Snake oh. face Nicki Minaj's booty. <laughs> okay, funny thing about that, during the uh during the photo shoot with uh Solworks photography, there is a joke photo that we took. Um, in the pose of it was a we saw it it was amazing photo. I, I, I want to get a hold of that sometime because it was fantastic. and just keep it above his bed so he can go to sleep to that booty every night <laughs> so I have for the last one uh, divine ingestion uh, you can pretty much eat anything uh, you can even devour you know like demigods and stuff so literally you have no limit to what you can stick in your gulch hole so you would just how, turn... how, how is my metabolism <laughs> like am i one of those people who are unnaturally skinny but can eat like anything i'm assuming you can at least pass i mean if if, if i eat a car am i gonna be as fat as a car yes i'm gonna say you're still gonna put on the calories but it's not gonna hurt you to pass it Mm. Mm. So you then just... I already have that power, so to speak. You've seen me eat things that shouldn't be eaten. I don't think you could eat a car. Give me two weeks. You're going to eat a car in two weeks? <laughs> well, let's drain the fluids because I don't want to like get poisoned. No, no. I mean, there was a guy that technically ate a, you know, uh, a jumbo jet, but it took him years. Yep. I'm looking that up right now. Guy who ate a jet. It was Michael Lotito, known as... Monsieur Majatot, who appropriately translates to Mr. Eats All, um, he ate an entire Cessna 150 between 1959 and 1997. It takes more than two weeks to eat a car, Rob. Even if we did like a like a little British car. Actually, going back to the like super ingestion, does that mean like I can physically like bite these things? Like I, if I ate a car, could I like? Yeah, I assume I assume you can actually you know digest it. So all every part of your digestive system is adapted to eat anything. But it's like let's say there's so a yeah, part- you can chew metal. You can just, oh, then maybe I could use the powers for evil because it's like I could just like eat through the back of a bank. Oh, that'd be smart. 
And then it's like you said, it could eat anything. So it's like no matter how powerful of safe they have, nom, 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 see, nom. See, with laser eyes, you'd want to be with the fire department. But you wouldn't want that same job with, you know, like like infinite in, you know, ingestion here. Because it'd be really weird to try to eat your way to I'm saving just someone. Like, it's heroic, but it's still awkward at the end. Where you're like, oh, man. I can just imagine like two firemen holding me while I'm just like, nom, 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 around the door. You're like the beaver <laughs> from that Ren and Stimpy game. Exactly. Goodbye. That would be me. On that note, we're going to head to our first break here, folks. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to 102.7 FM CILU or around the world at luradio.ca. We're your Thunder Geeks, and we'll be right back. Hey. Flash! And we're back. Of course, you're listening to 102.7 FM CILU or around the world at luradio.ca. That was... Ryan, tell us with the warp zone, with the the flash recap. Woo! Woo! So, so I mean, a bunch of the CW shows have been running for a while now. How how, how are you feeling about them, Rob? Rank them for me. Rank. Uh, for, have you watched Supergirl as well? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you, you're you're full in on time. So I want you to rank the four for them. Uh, let's see. In my opinion, I'd go with Legends first. Okay. Uh, flash second. Okay. Arrow third, Supergirl last. Really? Supergirl is my number one now. Really? 100%. Uh, season one for me, I mean, I was meh. I was pretty much checked out after episode five. And even at the end of season one, I'm like, well, I've watched it. I'm glad I've watched it, but I'm not super, super into it. The premiere with Superman was spot on. It's like, that Superman. They have mon in there now, which they're pretty much going to play off as Superboy. And they've just what? introduced Miss Martian. What about Superboy? It's not actual Superboy. So Mon L is a Daxum. Um, how do I describe this without it being terrible? They're pretty much viewed as um, criminals and everything that Donald Trump thinks about minorities. Uh, Kryptonian, Kryptonians think about Daxamites, but they have essentially the same powers as Kryptonians on Earth, but not as strong. So he has like, super strength, can leap a building in the you know single bound, Superboy's power set. No hmm. laser vision, no uh, freeze breath, etc. Hmm. But also no weakness to crypt- Kryptonite. So I think, and they have him wearing a black shirt already, I'm like 90% sure they're going to just set him up as Superboy instead, but not actually be Superboy. How comparable is he to Superboy from... No, no. No. He's cheerful and happy, and actually he's funny. Nah! Yeah, he's not brooding yet, but we do see him in jail, Ooh. so he is a bit of a bad boy. But that's just because uh, because Supergirl is space racist. No, he was in, in or the first actually being in jail was because he accidentally broke a guy's arm. Oh, fair, fair. He, he was in an arm wrestling contest with a guy and didn't know his own strength and snapped his arm. <laughs> but they assumed he was going to kill the president or tried to kill the president automatically <laughs> because Supergirl is space racist. Yeah. I saw a screenshot of a certain girl with uh, green skin. Yes, that is Miss Martian. <laughs> uh, it's really cool. They're having, um, obviously, they have the same twist that they're going to be setting up with her actually being a white Martian. <laughs> uh, but no, she's been a lot of fun. She's running essentially this underground alien bar where refu- alien refugees on Earth pretty much come to that bar to drink, relax, and just look like themselves. Hashtag goals. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for me, I'd probably put Flash second. I'm still enjoying the Flash. So we're tied there. All right. We're yeah, in agreement. Flash is just strong. Um, is it as strong as the first season yet? No. Better than the second season start so far? I think so. Yeah. And I like the new uh, Harrison Wells HR. Yeah, I like HR Wells. He's fun. I like that he's not into the science. He's essentially the Steve Jobs, but dumber of Earth 19, I think they 13. said. It was. Or, or 13. Uh, Arrow third, uh, I because yeah, I like I like the direction they're going with it now. I don't mind the Brafta flashbacks. I still wish flashbacks weren't there. Here's I like the thing. all this these is the last li- season with flashbacks because after that it's five years. Completely, but I'm happy that they're trying to move to a happier Ollie. There's no more shipping for Ollie. He's just going to be the Green Arrow, and we get to see him train a new team. Here's the thing I'm happy about that. Weirdly enough, DC Comics hasn't gotten together yet. What? Artemis. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't tried Artemis yet. They actually... Give me a 30 seconds to rant. In the Teen Titans comics with the New 52 launch, they did introduce an Artemis for three issues and then killed her off. 
Oh, but that, was that when it was still under Lobdell? Yes. Yeah, see, Lobdell was awful. Yeah, and that, here's the thing. I'm normally in comic books against, like, resurrecting people for no reason. Resurrect Artemis. I don't care. Just just say whatever. Yeah, I, I never read too much farther into Aquaman, but I know they introduced Calderon. I believe they didn't really do anything with him. DC Comics, man, get get it together. It's like you have this plethora of heroes that now a large number of people like throw them in there one thing i found interesting on arrow that uh when, when i was researching for the uh the blue beetle role that before ray palmer uh, or brandon ralph was playing Bray ray palmer he was supposed to actually be ted cord blue beetle and his character makes a thousand more percent sense now as they were setting up Court Industries, and they still had re references to Court Industries in this season, but yeah, Ray Palmer is supposed to be Ted Cord, and on you know the the Arrow and on Legends of Tomorrow, and now that I have that context, every time I seem like, yeah, he is pretty much still playing re re Ted Cord. It's not exactly, but they said they had a plan for the movies with him. Here's what I'm thinking now, though, um, because in the last last episode they destroyed uh, Ant Man or Adam's armor. Yes. Uh, they gave him Captain Cold's gun now. Yeah, they're kind of going their own direction with Which that. Which I'm okay with if it's good. For me, Legends of Tomorrow is still dumb fun, but it's not as engaging as it was last year, and... Yeah, I thought the, the Japanese the, the Japanese episode was dumb. It was <laughs> dumb. It might have worked if it came later in the seasons. Confederate zombies, I'm 100% down with. The, the way they handled, like, Jackson's character, though, in that... Ooh. Fantastic! Yeah, it was it was a good moral episode, and the thing with Legends of Tomorrow is that is the show that it is fun for everyone. It is a show a family can watch. However, and it's like, eh, eh, I, I'm not I'm not 100 down with it. I was kind of disappointed we didn't see much with the JLA. It was just a brief introduction for what I assume is Vixen's mom. Uh, I don't think it's a genetic thing. It's passed on to the uh, warrior thing, so it's like okay, yeah. Uh, I think they restarted Vixen, but I haven't actually checked out the show yet. No idea. And what was left? Uh, Arrow. Arrow. No, no, no we, uh, we talked a little bit about Arrow. I'm, I'm happy that he's happy. Yep. And that he's actually training a new team. And we see the change in Ollie legitimize. That it's not just lip service like they did at the end, uh, beginning of season uh, four. They actually want to turn him into Green Arrow. Make him a happier, uh, you know, not so brooding all the time. And not so... Yeah, no more Felicity. I'm so happy about Felicity. She's going to live her own life. She's now... She's an important character within the cave. She is Overwatch. She coordinates. She's the one that will second-guess Ollie and still combat with him. But we don't have to deal with this really forced love. Blah. And there's one other CW show that premiered that I know one here I watch is... Oh, which one? Uh, Supernatural. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that thing. Carry on my way. What son. season are they in now? Eleven. Is it still good? I like it. Fair. I sh I, I can never jump onto something that's 11 seasons long. Fair, and uh, I can get where you're coming from. To me, it's just... I, I've often said it. Monster of the Week formula, it, it hooks me in. Actually, speaking of Monster of the Week, there's a new show that I've kind of... Because it's Monster of the Week. Yes. Uh, Stand Against Evil. I, I've seen a promotion for this, but I haven't actually watched it. What is Stan vs. Evil? Against Evil. Against Evil. Um, so it stars... I can't remember the actor's name, but he played Dr. Cox in Scrubs. Nah, I never watched Scrubs. He, he, he was the jerky guy who... I never watched Scrubs. Fair. <laughs> okay, to, to put it this way, if I ever go wrong, 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 wrong... It's not Donald Trump, it's no. that dude? Yes. So, pretty much he plays uh, a scruffy jerkish cop but the kind of jerk where you're like <laughs> if this guy was real i'd be terrified uh cop whose wife dies and he retires from the force but then it turns out there's this whole curse honestly where the chief of police is always killed except for him and it turns out that his wife was protecting his life this entire time so now the spirits want to kill him to make up for what they did and the new chief but the show opens brilliantly. This how many episodes are they in right now? Two. Two? Okay, so I'm going to check it out. This is literally how the show opens. He's at his wife's funeral, and there's a laughing old witch. So what he does is he just puts her in a headlock and starts punching her at the <laughs> funeral. Same, though. <laughs> 
So, so, let's talk about what we talk about every week, what we've been up to this week. The main thing that uh, I got to do with Rob and Kyle this week was Haunting Ground. Um, <laughs> Megan, Megan wanted us to play this game super, super bad. Lame. It was, it was definitely a game. Okay. Megan, Megan, what makes you like it is my question. Okay, so, well, so Haunting Ground opens up with some girl that I'm not sure who she is still. We played this game for about three hours, I think, or two hours. I have no idea what's going on in this game. There's just naked chick who's running in a toga with, like, her bed sheets there, and she's being chased by a uh, sloth from the Goonies who wants to naughty touch her a lot, apparently. He wants Megan, to her. Megan, do you have a thing for Sloth from the Goonies? No. Okay, Are you so sure? I'm going to explain to you what Haunting Ground is about. Haunting Ground, you start off, and uh, there's a girl who has been captured. Wearing a toga. Wearing a toga. She's all like, ah, toga party. Man. So she's been kidnapped, and um, for a reason, because her... Okay. Spoiler for me, we're not going to finish <gasps> the game. What? Why? It's a really good game. Okay, so she's kidnapped by her uncle, essentially. Her father is a, is a alchemist created clone who was given the gift to be able to give life. Okay. So he, that's what she has is her father's quote unquote Azoth, which you were pronouncing terribly wrong. Azoth? Azoth? Azoth. Yeah, you were pronouncing it ter- like wrong. Remember wrong. The, remember the, wrong. <laughs> You're just wrong. Wrong. Remember the luminescence? Did you guys run into any of those? Yeah, it blew up in my face. Yeah, it blew yeah. up in my face. It's like... <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Normally we see sparkly things in games. You're supposed to go towards it. Yeah, this one you don't. Um, so Luminescence are attracted to your Azoth, which is your life essence. And essentially her uncle kidnaps her and kills her family. Ooh, like fun. Her, her parents. So that he can use her to continue the alchemic process of cloning. Alchemaic. Alchemaic process of cloning. Is that, what up with, is that Sloth? Is Sloth just a clone of her and just really... He's a failed experiment. He's a failed experiment? And so is the creepy li- girl with the drills. With the double drills. The, oh, the, maid. the maid. The maid. We did yeah, see the maid. She's also a failed clone. Yeah, she's lacking as well. Yeah, so... So you know how Sloth chases you through the, throughout the game? Yeah, he wants to stick those slimy sausages as, in me. As soon as you defeat him, there is another level where... The maid starts chasing after you, and oh, she's no. even scarier. No, I don't want to be chased by more stuff. <laughs> and it just gets worse and worse and worse and more difficult as you play the game, which is actually really fun because you, each uh, each boss battle is a, is a puzzle as well. Props to Rob playing this though. He had he I was know. very intuitive. I did not. He was getting the clues right away, and I'm like, I have no I'm idea so what to do. But I was really laughing because I was watching you guys play, it, and you're like, we should probably go upstairs. And then yeah, Andrew and just then, kept and giving Kyle... us bad dis- in- instructions of where to go. <laughs> and then Kyle's like, no, you have to search her around. You know, you have to look around. And then I'm like, I'm like, Andrew's right. Go Andrew's up the right. stairs. And then and then you were so salty about it. You're like, wow, guys, I guess we should have just went up the stairs. Like I was just <laughs> like, just terrible at instructions. <laughs> no, and then I was watching you guys play it and it was so funny because oh my gosh Robert running down the stairs when Sloth was chasing him after you after Fiona was so exhausted she's like holding her gut I'm like no I, I didn't realize exhaustion was a thing yeah, yeah she runs really um jiggle physics where she just has her hands out to the side and she just sways boing 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 boing, boing, boing. yeah the um the jiggle physics in this game is actually quite ridiculous because like you can is just, it Capcom like, it is Capcom Capcom I told you it's Capcom <laughs> the reason why this game is a little bit lacking is because all their focus was on Resident Evil 4 at the time. So this game kind of just got put to the side and they're like, okay, I guess we'll just kind of finish it, whatever. Fair, fair. For me, that game would be Threads of Fate because uh, Square was paying attention to FF8 and yeah. I think Xenogears. And this was the other RPG they released that year. It's a lot of fun. So there was another complaint you guys had about the game, which was... The controls were awful? No, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. It was the dang dog. The, the dog. dog The dog is awful. I hate that dog. What we tried you... to play fetch with it. Yeah. And, like, the ball glitches out and just kind of rolls down. And, the and then like, right back to you? The ball is, like... Huey. Yeah. Huey. Huey. Friggin' Huey. Huey. I hate Huey. Huey's no, I, an awful no, no. dog. We named him Gus, remember? Oh, yeah. He was Gus. Gus. <laughs> 
Okay, so the thing about the dog is like you can't even play fetch with him, okay? You can't play the fetch game with him. Um, you use the ball once and then after you use that ball, it's done. You can't pick it up. We did though. We did. We picked it up twice. You did? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh my god, no. You know what? I just never played fetch with him because there's You're different... a bad owner. You're no. just terrible. Why You're do you hate terrible owners? Why do you hate dogs, Megan? <sighs> <laughs> There's different ways to interact with Huey. You can like, you can pet him, and you can call can I, call him, and then you can like scold him if you need to. I'm gonna scold him all the time. Like Huey, I hate you. Go away, well, like, Gus. Why the, aren't you a cat? The more you train him, the better uh, relationship you have with him, and it it dictates what it dictates what. <laughs> I can't say this word. It dictates. dictates what sort of ending you get at the end. Because if you have a terrible relationship with Huey, he, eats he your won't face. he won't come save you. And then you get preggers. Because yeah. you dictate. Because sloth. Because sloth's sloth. uncle, basically. Yeah. You dictate sloth. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like you have to build up that, that, that good relationship with Huey because he protects Gus. you and he attacks the, your chasers after a while. So you can actually have some time to run away. And, and jiggle. And then he does puzzles with you too. Like you can send him in to get stuff. Yeah. So for me, I've been thinking ahead recently into the future. And What's the occasion? Well, well, we have the, the coming um, enshrinement of President Lord Business coming. Uh, so I've been trying to think of a positive sci-fi or future vision where corporations have taken over. Because any, any sci-fi I can think of or any sort of fantasy novel I can think of, when we give that much power into corporations, it never turns out well. So we have things, you know, like, uh, idiocracy. Idiocracy, uh, where you know the uh, the FDA sold to Brondo. <laughs> Most, and I mean uh, Johnny Mnemonic's another one. Um, with, I'm trying to think though. Is there any positive example where we have that? The only, the closest thing I can think of, but in the movie it makes fun of, not with corporations, but like just that sort of vision is Star, uh, Starship Troopers, where in Starship Troopers you need to have military service to earn the right of citizenship and to have a child. Though in the actual movie they just make fun of that. Uh, they gave the complete opposite reaction, and I love the movie. But yeah, yeah, it, it's, I was really hard searching it out. I, I can't really find an example. The closest examples I can find, or at least I can think of, where a corporation seems to be semi-benevolent is in Wally. Because despite the entire Earth being destroyed, the people living on that ship are doing pretty well. I mean, they just sit around all day. They have no ambition, but they're taken care of. And the Lorax, which once again, the entire world's been destroyed except for this, like, one city. But everyone living in that city's doing pretty well, which is really ironic for the, you know, another reason why I hate the Lorax. <laughs> Movie, he not the book. Yeah, no, I love the book, movie, awful. But I, I'm trying to think of a positive vision for that because I'm like, there's a lot of people that want this and I'm trying to figure out why. And I'm having that trouble and I can't think of any like sci-fi that portrays that in a positive light. I, can we imagine a world where corporations, like if Google takes over, if Google takes over everything, you will you be happy? You mean they haven't yet? Ha <laughs> ha, shots fired. Fair. No, that that is fair. We have the Google car coming out. Uh, Google knows everything about you from your search history. Dang Will it. you give yourself... Also, I'm also terrified because uh, Blizzard wants to uh, uh, set Google's DeepMind, the uh, AI that beat the Grandmaster at Go, to play StarCraft 2. So they've taken Go from the Koreans, and now they're coming after StarCraft? This is a horrible idea. If they so Google keep... wants to invade Korea. Maybe because if DeepMind learns battle tactics, we're—I mean, there's Skynet. Oh, no. There's Skynet right there. Yeah, we cannot teach robots to play StarCraft. What if? What if DeepMind is just like, "Yo, I love StarCraft. This is so awesome!" Like, oh, you know, Doritos and Gary, Mountain Dew. Mountain oh, Dew. like what? But if no, just... it doesn't eat Doritos. <laughs> what it can't he... be satiated by burritos. But and... it's a computer. Don't they love chips? <laughs> ah. No. Stupid. Hey, no. What if DeepMind just turns into, like, a cool, chill gamer dude? Or or gal. Whichever. What if he turns into an angry rage monster? <laughs> That'd be the most racist computer ever. Yes, it's gonna be awful. <laughs> no, no. 
I, yeah, no, we cannot teach the robots to play StarCraft 2. We were teaching it how to fight us with future technology. So DeepMind will just invent the technology of the Terrans, the Protoss, and even the Zerg. It's going to start biochemically engineering just Zerglings to come at us. We're all doomed. We cannot teach robots to play StarCraft 2. I am putting my foot down here. Andrew, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I needed to stop you there. On that it's note, <laughs> we're going to head to our next break here, folks. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U, or around the world at luradio.ca. We're your Thunder Geeks, and we'll be right back. Bark this is Vegeta, and you're listening to Thunder Geeks on 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U. And we're back. Guys, thank you so much for joining us once again. That was I'm gonna, that or, was Vegeta. That was Vegeta, but no, the, the, the <laughs> band the band was Illyrian with Chaotic Neutral. That's the angriest song we've played. Thank you, Anonymous Donor, to our cubby. That was a fun song. Is it anonymous, or did we just lose the letter? We might have just lost the letter in transit there. So, so let's let's roll into what we've been uh, up to this week as well. Megan, Megan, uh, I understand you got to watch you watched a minisode and then we showed you a movie. So I want to I want to talk about the minisode first because I'm <gasps> sad. Why? It seems like a pilot, but I don't see anything that says that's going to get picked up. Um, this is something that uh, it was it was a minisode on Cartoon Network, and it's sort of a pilot. It may get picked up and turn into a show. I hope so. This I am freaking out about because... What's it called? What's it called It's first? called Infinity Train. And it stars Tulip, a uh, bookish Megan. Ner- nerd Megan. girl voiced... Megan. It's Megan. essentially <laughs> Megan. Megan with red hair. It's a bookish nerd, uh, bookish, like, intelligent uh, girl who likes solving puzzles and uh, she's voiced by Ashley Johnson, the voice of Ellie from The Last of Us. So I was just like, ah, screaming as soon as I was like, I was just like, I'm in love with this girl's voice. Oh my God, it's Ellie. I so, thought Ellie was voiced by Ellen Page. No, no, that's where you were wrong, sir. That's where you are wrong. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I got really excited about that, but I digress. So Tulip has been stuck on this train for about a week now. She has a glowing number on her hand that's 53. Her number is 53. And she is accompanied by a little robot that's actually split into two halves called the sad one and the glad one. And together they create one one. So me and Rob. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Rob's like, woo, fart car. And I'm like, oh, fart car. The next one's a fart car. (laughs) And I love their dynamic because when they're together, they, they still speak individually. But when they're separated, it's like their, their personalities come out too. Which is nice. Um, he has been on the train forever, though. Um, it doesn't explain how she got on the train, why she's on the train, or even how 1-1 is on the train either, where 1-1 come from. So she has to find a way home and figure out why there's a number on her hand. We get to go to Corgania! Yes, yes, it was a land of corgis. <gasps> so awesome! And Atticus, the ruler of Corgania, is like... Please help us. No, please help us. My tiny stubby paws are too short to swim this ca- canal. <laughs> please help me across this two across foot this di- river. deep river. <laughs> because it is two feet deep, and I will surely drown. Like it's it's such like I love how they played off the fact that they are actually dogs. Like a uh, tulips. Like you want to go aside? You want to go aside? And he's like, Nah. Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. No, I don't. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, actually, it wasn't uploaded that uh, that long ago, four days ago, so I guess they're using this as sort of a backdoor pilot, like Adventure Time never got picked up originally when it first aired. It wasn't until the, uh, the uh, a version went up on YouTube and exploded in popularity, they're like, oh, we should make a full show about this. So yeah, there, I, I was I was worried. I'd go look at this up. It's like, oh, this was released three years ago. Aww. We're never going to get This is such a fun show. I want to see more of it. I'm really excited because, first of all... Fart car. Fart car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad that they have like a very morbid character as well. Like that that's not something that we usually see in shows. Like even <laughs> there was that one episode of Adventure Time where the helium balloons, he's like, Your life debt is fulfilled, guys. You can <laughs> and then he frees all the balloons. <laughs> we fall and we could die. Like I love morbid humor. So yeah, it's- no, it- it's quirky, it's fun. I like that it has a female protagonist that is, you know, bookish and nerdy because you don't get to see that as Megan. often. You get to see Megan in a cartoon starring. But uh, yeah, it was fun. You, you wanted a cosplay? Just find those glasses and a red wig. I Boom. was just going to say hashtag cosplay goals. I'm getting an upgrade on my glasses soon. I'm going to get big round ones so I can cosplay as uh, 
<laughs> if you get glasses that big on your face, I am getting a Nerf gun and I'm going to be shooting darts at your face trying to get him to stick to the glass. No. There's no way around this, Megan. I'm just getting big round glasses for cosplay purposes, mostly. Um, and anyways. Yeah. I, I, th I think we're through it. Actually, Rob, Rob, uh, before we go too far in, let, let's let's talk about Doctor Strange. Because me and Rob got to see Doctor Strange. We, we will not spoil. We will try our best not to spoil. But... Uh, I am in love with this movie. It is, hands down, the most visually appealing Marvel movie made. This is the first Marvel movie they made that was intended to be in 3D and wasn't just converted over to get more Disney dollars. And it is stunning. I have not seen 3D this good since Avatar. And Avatar, you know, bedazzled me into thinking it had an amazing plot when it just looked really cool on screen. But, like, right out the, the opening when they show you the temple, there's just layer after layer after layer where you see depth, and it's not just two, it's like seven, eight, nine, it's just, ah! For me, the moment that, like, I think I actually grabbed you at this point was when they're in the mirror dimension, and all the cards are like, that weird MC Etcher thing where it's like, nothing's right, but your brain just can't process what's wrong. Yeah, everyone kept comparing this to Inception. Inception has nothing on Doctor Strange. This warps reality physically in so many different angles. To the point where your brain is actually trying to catch up with... That's well, wrong! What's Why? happening? It is visually appealing. Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> okay, can, can I get a little bit? Is he at least a little hot as Doctor Strange? I never thought Doctor Strange was hot. I do think Benedict Cumberbatch has one of the most sexy voices out there. Thank you, thank you. And he gets a topless scene in this. It's amazing, Megan. Which is funny because he actually, like, during an interview, uh, said, I worked out for seven months. I'm getting a topless scene. So what you're telling me is the visuals in this movie and... Spectacular. And uh, Benedict Cumberbatch's chest, are all that's going to make up for his face? And no, his face works. Wait till he because because thing is you get you get his regular face at first, but then and, goateed. Well, no, no, no. Then he gets all hairy because he it's it's a beautiful moment. Um, be. The story behind with Doctor Strange is that he's this brilliant surgeon. He's an arrogant surgeon. He is. He's got a perfect record. He's got a perfect record. He is the the best surgeon in the world. And then he gets in an accident, and busts up his hands, and he becomes desperate to fix. He's them. got so, such nerve damage they just don't stop trembling. So he can't even shave himself, so he stops, and you watch him just break down to the point where he becomes so desperate, he ends up following, um, you know, this essentially crazy pipe dream because he finds a man who should be paralyzed that learned to walk again. He's like, where did you do it? He's like, well, after I gave up on medicine, I decided to expand my mind instead and sent him off to uh, India. Uh, well, actually, no, it was Timbuktu. Uh, Katmandu. 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 Originally, I think it was Tibet, but they uh, changed that so it can make it into China. Yes. Oh, man. But it's it's a beautiful story. It's it's emotionally compelling while being one of the most visually stunning Marvel movies they have done. And it introduces magic into the MCU. And in a way that it makes it, you know, understandable. And it's fun. I, I cannot recommend this enough. It is just amazing. So maybe it might be one of those situations where, like, I don't like Superman, but I like... I think you I would like lock... Superman with the beer, with the goatee. Evil Superman. Evil Superman. Oh, uh, Gods and Monsters. Thank you. Fair, fair. I think you would really like Doctor Strange. I think after the movie, I think you'll be on board with, with uh, the Benedict Cumberbunch. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a good name for a fan base. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, they got a lot of different names. <laughs> they have a lot of different names. Now, Rob, I know you went to the movies again. Uh, what else did you see? Uh, me and Kyle went to go see Inferno, the third in the th Dan Brown uh, cinematic versions. The Da Vinci Code movies. Yeah. You made me watch the first one. You're telling me the second one's better. The first one, I can see why everyone hates it. It's not a terrible movie, but Ian McKellen is the only thing that carried me through that movie. To, to me, it's I can understand people not liking it. I, I get that. But the amount of hate these movies get, I have never been able to understand. I think it's a cross between, you know, because it's dealing with religious themes, that's going to set a lot of people off right off the bat. And then on top of that, honestly, other than Ian McKellen, there isn't much chemistry on screen. And I don't even mean, like, as a love interest, like, between Tom Hanks and the French actress that I don't remember her name. Sophie. They're just really boring together. Like, there's, there's just no interest or spark or friendship or anything they're just two characters on screen spouting exposition to each other and man do you feel that two and a half hours 
Yeah, I remember watching it a long time ago, and I was very bored while I was watching it. But I was also like, oh, yeah, this is the ending. And then when the ending came around, I was it like... It doesn't end. It's, it's like, longer oh. than Lord of the Rings. It just drags on. It's just like, just stop. It's I know <laughs> what happened with the movie. You could stop now. I was like, no, <laughs> I need to go Tebow by the uh, by the uh, the Louvre here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what's Inferno about? How is Inferno? Uh, Inferno is... Uh, a, well, each of the movies takes something historically known and tweaks it just a little. The first one takes uh, the Holy Grail. The second one takes the Illuminati, and this one takes Dante's Inferno. Does the Illuminati have uh, lizard people? No. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> Dante's Inferno. Yeah, and uh, what it it starts off actually in one of the better openings for this. Uh, Robert Langdon, the main character of these movies, wakes up in a hospital without memory of the last two days, and it opens with him like regaining consciousness, trying to get his bearings and everything, and a cop just walks in and starts shooting the place up and trying to kill him. And he has no memory of lights. Why am I trying to? Why is someone trying to kill me? What did I do? What happened? Now, I, is there a ver- like? Is he going through like a symbolic version of like the nine rings of hell? Or? Yes. Uh, so what it is is uh, first off, uh, Inferno refers to a specific virus created because a billionaire believes we are metaphorically one minute to midnight. Uh, our population boom is too fast, and we need to slow it down. So he's going to release pretty much a new version of the Black Death. And just, you know, kill off most of humans. Yes. Oh, wow. So how do the circles... T- can, can you give me that without spoiling too much? How do the circles tie into it? Because that's my biggest question. Uh, so first off is they get a picture of, like, the description of Dante's version of hell with the nine yeah. circles. First but, circle's limbo. Yeah, but they notice that the circles are out of order. Really? The circles are out of order. So, I mean, is Lust still second or did Lust get moved up or down the list? No, no. It's, um, the way it's designed is like an inverted pyramid where okay. the frozen is at the very bottom. And the top is just for, like, the, eh, not so bad, but still kind of bad souls. But uh, Robert Langdon notices, he's like, hey, this layer should be up three more. And they're noticing, like, little differences. And in the tweaks, they see, like, letters leading to one location. And again, it, it's it's a... So there's no orgy lust circle in this? There is. Oh, sweet! But there's no, like, orgy lust level, so to speak. Aww. But then they go... Uh, this, this is, to me, where the movie gets really, really interesting outside the opening. They go to a museum because they the first clue leads them to Dante's death mask, where it's supposed to be... Uh, during the Black Death, a lot of people would have the their family members' faces immortalized in clay, in plaster. And they're like, okay, the next clue's on Dante's face. But when they get there, the mask is gone, and they're like, oh, where where to go? So they look at the security footage, and Robert Langdon's the one who stole it. And he's like, I don't remember doing this. What's going on? And for a who's good- got my face? <laughs> so for a good chunk of the movie, it's like, it is did like the guy, crazy guy, convince Robert Langdon about wiping out humanity to save humanity? Ooh, that's spooky. Hmm. And at that point, I'm just gonna not say what's going on with the story because I don't want to spoil. Fair, fair. Um, so I mean. Is at least the second and third movie, they're all done by Ron Howard, and that was probably my biggest issue with the first movie. I'm like, man, the story's not bad, it's just the way it's being presented is terrible. In my opinion, the second one's the best of them all. Is it faster, at least? Because that, yes. was, that was a big problem I had, where I'm like, man, a lot of these scenes do not need to take this long. I don't know how close it is to the book, but it seems like it's trying to like treat everything with such reverence and awe that... Every scene is like, okay, I get the idea. Yes. Can we move on now? The second one is... What's like, in the box? <laughs> the second one is faster. And again, that's my personal favorite, Angels and Demons. Fair. Angels and Demons deals with uh, an antimatter bomb hidden somewhere in Vatican City. Antimatter? Yeah. It, it, no, there's actually hard science to this. And we have... <laughs> hard science. <laughs> we have collected particles of antimatter in suspended states. This is just uh, alternate timeline science, so to speak, where they've collected enough antimatter. To make a bomb! To say the least, yeah, that would... Well, Unless you pay me two billion dollars! No, this isn't about uh, buying, getting money. No, this oh. is about... Uh, so My revenge against... The church. The church! Eat yeah, it, Pope! Uh, so what I love about these three movies is that they borrow a lot from actual history and then tweak it just enough so it's still true, but the modern day interpretation is wrong. 
Pulp, you think you matter? Nah, -uh, you anti matter now. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I'm gonna hate this movie. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll I'll try. I'll try. Well, but I, I'm pr I, at the very least, I <clears throat> reserve the right to make fun of it oh, yeah, constantly. Okay. Wait, wait. I think I know the hook to get Andrew to watch the second movie. Okay. Ewan McGregor playing a villain. Ooh, I'm down for the Ian McGregor. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, but... Does he speak with his accent? Yes. Oh, we're down. <laughs> yeah. But my question for you is, you're, you're a critic. You've only seen the first one. How would you rate, like, on a 100% scale? Uh, this is like a 4. Like a 4 out of 10. Like, honestly, I don't regret watching it. I have no desire to ever watch it again. And the moment Ian McKellen is off screen, it is boring and terrible those four is completely because of him he is he lights up the screen he's very engaging tom hanks just squints a lot just mm, i'm very <laughs> concerned and then anytime they have a french actor speaking in english it's just delivered so wooden i can't take them seriously it, it's i mean you can have bad i mean a good you know english as a second language actors the ones they had in this movie though just did not act in English. Well, well on the I, plus side, I think 99% of Angels and Demons is English cast. Fair, fair. I mean, I'm, I'm not being, you know, I'm not being mean to the French people here. It's just those actors did not work in English. Eh, well, if you are a fan of the first two movies, go watch Inferno because it's been like 10 years since it and I needed this movie. <laughs> I got to watch a movie this week. Yes, we decided to watch a spooky movie with Megan, finally. <laughs> yeah, Oh, we've been wanting to show this one for a long time. Tell us. Yeah, you guys have been pushing me to watch this movie. It's called uh, The Cabin in the Woods. Not to be confused with the terrible movie Cabin in the Woods. This is The Cabin in the Woods. It's the definitive one. <laughs> um, I'm not sure of the history of this one. It was. It's made Joss by Whedon. Joss Whedon. This is Whedon. Thank you. This is Whedon just having fun. Um, so, you know, it's... Horror movie, yeah, woo, we're going in, we're gonna, oh, a bunch of friends. Spoiler warnings. Oh, spoilers, guys. Spo I mean, it, it's it's quite old, so I mean, it's... How old is this movie? Uh, a couple of years, I think, 2012. I, I still say spoilers, because this is one of those movies that you should go into it blind. Yeah, if you haven't seen Cabin in the Woods, uh, yeah, two, 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 goodbye. Chris but... Hemsworth still looked tiny in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's how old it is. Um, anyways... So, a bunch of friends, okay, yeah, we're going to go on a road trip. We're going to go to a cabin in the woods for the weekend. Yay, have fun, party. We've all been studying really hard. So, they end up going there, but... There's this counter story that's also going on with the scientists underneath that they don't explain to you. Yeah, and it's like so But they like keep so watching random. them all creepily. They're like... There's like this corporation at the beginning where they're like talking about stuff and you're just not sure what's going on and then it's just like the cabin in the woods and then it goes to like the students and you're like, what the heck is this? So it turns out that um, these students are being monitored by these creepy businessmen. Yes. And uh, for it's, a reason. It's essentially to fulfill a ritual and what they do is they turn the idea of horror movies, not just within North America, but around the world into cultural rituals that they need to uh, perform to quell the ancient gods to quell the ancient gods essentially to make the dark lords like cthulhu and your ancient ones the nightmares that used to roam the earth they need to be satiated by elaborate rituals and with this one it's a trope upon the horror movie so they're saying that essentially every horror movie that's ever happened was true it was a ritual that was set up to yeah, and you always have your stereotypes so they even turn it in so they have your jock your scholar your fool fool your um salacious one uh, the Madonna, I think they called her. Yeah, the Madonna, and uh, <laughs> and the then you and you have your virgin. The fun one with this one is that the main character isn't a virgin, but she keeps forgetting it during the movie. Yeah, it's like it's really weird. She she, yeah, she hooked up with her professor, I think, or something, and she just forgets that she's a virgin halfway through the movie. The, like, they uh, they explain why though. Yeah, so the businessmen can control like things by like oh they they gave. They're drugging, yeah, they're drugging them. They're drugging them, like them. yeah, like so. They dyed her hair blonde to make her dumber and more aroused, and they made the guy more, you know, steroid and alpha jock. But he was a, I think it was they had him as a psych major. Yeah, yep. he was a psych major. Yeah, and he was there on an honors scholarship. And then the the other the other character started turning into the scholar, 
Uh... Now, at, 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 the, at the live show, we were talking about how we die in a horror movie. I think Marty is my best option, and I'm pretty sure that's how me and Megan go down, is that we'll survive the horrors, but then it ends with us exploding up the world. Like, that's <laughs> that's our... We'll, we'll never make it out truly alive. We're just going to end with the demons coming in. We're just like, eh. Though I will say, Marty gives the best line of the whole movie. Where he's like, Puppet Masters? And the girl repeats it back to him. He's like, Pop-Tarts? <laughs> and then just wanders off. That would be you, Andrew. Completely. Like, this, this is just going bad. We're going nuts. It's like, ooh, Pop-Tarts. Yeah, yeah. It's a, mm, yeah. I really liked the idea of how they picked um, which horrors were coming after them. Um, cause the they make them choose. Yeah, yeah, they make them choose. The characters all go into the basement. Ooh, creepy basement. And there's all these like items laying around. There's uh, a conch. There's to summon the mermaid. To summon the, the merman. The merman. The merman, sir. And then there's there's a conch. There's a locket. There's a uh, an orb that's like a puzzle. Uh, what else was there? There's a diary. Uh, there, there's the doll. There's the pendant. There's was a dead ballerina box. There's yeah. a lot. And yeah, anything in that room would summon something. Did you have a favorite monster from it? Oh, the guy with the ball. The guy with the ball. I that... wanted him, like, and he has, like, the saw blades in his yeah. head. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of, like, I don't know why I really like Pinhead. him. Pinhead. He looks cool. He looks really cool. Rob, did you have a favorite monster? Uh, what was that thing? Oh, definitely the clown. No. <laughs> I think I like the saw head guy because I feel like he ha his puzzle thing, if they would solve it, he'd be like, I am free. And he would Clank. just, like, disappear. And he would no, be no, like, he, I no, am No, he, he was coming to kill them. <laughs> oh, Hasn't but Megan ever seen Hellraiser? That was the idea. It was their version of Pinhead. Oh, see, I never watched Hellraiser. Oops. <laughs> oh, you would like it. For well, me, I have to say it was the ballerina with teeth for a face. That was adorable. I just want to see her go, like, spin over top and just kind of grind down. I think it'd be fun. That would, You know what? This would make a really good video game. Like, yeah, this would, would be a really cool game. That, that's Megan. On that note, guys, we're going to wrap up the show here. Thanks so much for tuning in once again to Thunder Geeks. And, of course, continue the conversation online or come to our stream at, fa uh, stream at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak. And uh, come chill with us after the show or follow us on our other show, social media on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, or Tumblr at Thunder Geeks. Want to send some emails, some fan mail, some erotic fan fiction? Do so to our email at thundergeeks at luradio.ca. Our final song here is going to be from Bedford Level Experiments, and that is Programming for Hours. Of course, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Thunder Geeks. I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. And I'm Megan. And we'll see you next week.